Body time. Yeah. My colleague Rail spent two days on this body cleaning up all the tar so we can see what it needs. And there are some places that require a lot of attention, but there are some areas that I'm really pleased with. For example, the boot, but I'll show you later there. I showed you already a couple of times what's going on here. They patched some rust, uh, but they just patched it right on top with uh, pieces of metal. And this is where we will have to peel this off and replace the we replace them properly because they left the rust inside. The engine bay doesn't look too too bad. Like this is the normal stuff there. The normal stuff over there in the corner. And of course here where they patched the the hole from the outside but they left the metal the rusted metal inside like here too this here is surprisingly clean the battery tray is clean here uh, the wheel arch will have to repla repair and down there the same thing they patched on the outside but inside we still have the rust here too you see There's a patch on the outside, but it's just covering whatever is inside. Inside, we know the floors need to be changed. This one is missing. This one is still there, but just because they, they have a, if you see here, they have a big patch. So here they have a big patch in the driver's footwell, and then they just overlapped the existing floor with a new patch. And then they put another patch over here, overlapping the existing floor plus the new patch. So we have three layers of metal over there. But here, the boot is what surprises me because it is really, really solid. Usually you see rust all over the place here. But this one is very nice and clean. But everything was covered with tar. And here I want to say something. I know many of you suggest uh, sandblasting. And maybe that's going to happen at some point. Maybe the car is going to go to sandblasting, but um, for now, at this point, it, even if we want to send it to sandblasting, we can't because, first of all, it was covered with tar, so all the tar needs to be removed before you send something to be sandblasted, and also all these patches. I want to get rid of the patches. If I have to replace something, I'm going to replace it. Like here, why would I sandblast this when there's a lot of rust behind it? I need to get rid of that. And once I get rid of that, I'm actually going to replace it. And when I replace it, maybe at some point after I do some work on the car, maybe most of the work, then I'm going to send it out for sandblasting. And when it comes back, of course, we're going to fix whatever else needs to be fixed. But like I said, there's no point of sandblasting this, right? Why would I send sandblast this? I'm just going to cut it off, replace it, and that's it. And uh, that's another point why I don't send it for sandblasting right now. And the third point is because this car, actually, we use it as a filler job. Right now the shop is not very busy, and we have people just uh, roaming around, so we, I prefer to give them this uh, job to do it so at least they can do something so uh, that's also one reason why we don't want to send the car for sandblasting we prefer to use the manpower that we have here and not send people home you know soon i guess we're going to be busy again and then maybe not even i'm going to be able to work on this car so yeah enough rumbling let's get to work I just spent a good 10 minutes deciding where to start from and uh, I was thinking maybe I should start from this. I, I actually checked online and these are available, they're pretty cheap, they're $36 so I'm gonna replace the back of the B-Posts 
but that's another story. So I was thinking whether I should start from here or from where. And finally I decided that I should start from the frame. <laughs> Yeah, we better start with the frame because if we work on the body without any support underneath that is risky because we might uh, screw up the geometry so we should put the frame under the body but we got the spray from Eastwood, the internal coating so we should better use it now that the frame is still here in this position and after it's done we're gonna put it under the car and then we're gonna start working on the body so that's what we should do now Kind of messed around the paint where it sprayed outside. But that's no problem because, like I said, we're gonna spray it with a uh, crap bed liner at some point. I used uh, three cans, even though it says here that for such a frame, two cans should be enough. But I used three anyways. So I think it covers it very well as long as I can see through all the holes. It covers very well inside. So hopefully that's going to prevent it from rusting again. We will see, it's 100 years. If it rusts again in 100 years, then we're going to think about changing the whole frame. Maybe a Rafco frame or something. <laughs> God that we still have part of the old frame here <laughs> attached to this body from this side too. I have to cut them. So now that the body and the frame were together, I could start with the repairs and I decided to start with this easy one, uh, the top flange and see how easy it is to take the patches out and most importantly what's behind it. So they used solid metal, looks like this is 18 gauge, yeah. good metal, but we didn't do a very good job. Okay, at least we have the lip here for reference because I was concerned about the height. Now we have the height, so that's a good thing. We have the height here, we have the height here, and we have more or less the height, the height here, so we keep repair. They didn't even remove the speed clip from here, they covered it. So for sure I have to replace this piece. And why don't I replace it in stages so I can have reference and everything. I'll, I can test with the fender a couple of times and if everything is good then I can move to the next one, to the next one. And finally when all the repairs are done, all of them, then I can send it to sandblasting. Yeah, but for now I think this is the best way. Just remove patches, use the needle scaler to make sure I take out all the damaged metal because I thought, for example, here I thought it was good and when I use the needle scaler it just uh, screwed up the whole thing. So I don't need sandblasting for that. I just need metal now. I don't have any metal. 
All right, guys, what do you see here? What do you see? A TR6 hood. A TR6 hood that is not worth anything because it's so rotten there. Uh, okay, if you see that, it's fine. It is that too, but for me, that's about 10 square feet of solid 18 gauge metal. <laughs> so this is what I'm gonna use for uh, the little repairs now because I don't have any 18 gauge metal. We can buy some, but by the time we buy some, I can use pieces of this hood that came off the 73 TR6. And you know, by the time you fix this leading edge here and the hole over there and the hole over there, that thing is gonna warp so much that you will never be able to make it flat again. So, and plus it has been sandblasted, so it is uh, not good for uh, hood anymore, but it is good for repairs. I think this hole I'm gonna repair separately, because I don't wanna cut the whole piece, and I wanna use it as a reference point here. piece of triumph came out. All right, nice and solid metal. Cleaned it up a little bit from the paint. That's the only problem with it. I have to clean the paint, but other than that, it's nice and solid metal. Sorry, move your feet, guys. Sorry. Okay. The flange is too deep, and it's not that easy, but it's working. Slowly, slowly, it's gonna happen. I don't have a very good method of uh, checking it. Maybe that's the way. I think it's good. I think it's perfect. Okay. Okay, good. So we're just gonna clean it and it's ready to weld, but it is actually Friday night, so we're gonna leave it here and we're gonna finish it on Monday, but that's, that's what we're gonna start doing on Monday. We'll start welding. Yay! Easier said than done though, because on Monday when I started welding, there were other people working on the car as well and they were shaking it and making all kinds of noises. So I had no other choice but to only make patches and tuck them in place and leave the welding for later. I only needed them to be in place so I could uh, start working on the next patch. And uh, you know, that's what I kept doing the whole day. Once the first patch was tucked in place, I could cut out the next one and I have to be careful also not to throw the, all the sparks into the face of the guy that was working next to me. <laughs> and once all the bad metal was cut out, this is what I was left with. Not much, but solid, so I could start building up from here. And I'm not gonna show you all the details here, I'm gonna show you just different stages because if I start showing you all the repairs in all of their details we'll have to make about 1534 videos about this car. And voila, 
the second patch is in place. All right, uh, now that we warmed up with this <laughs> here, we will see what's the best approach. I, I'm gonna leave this alone for now. I'm gonna start working from here up and I don't really know what to do here because the, the inner wheel the inner wheel well actually has a hole here that needs to be repaired, but that's the only problem of it. So the op all the problem is here on this piece. And let me show you on the inside. So that's inside. You see it's missing from here down to, I don't know. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece out of the wheel well like that. I'm going to repair it. And before I put it back, I'm going to work on this arch here. I'm gonna see what we can do there. I actually changed my mind here. I tried to cut notches in the flange of the wheel wheel and open it like so. And after I finished the other repair I was planning to uh, close this back and weld it but it didn't work anyway so at some point I got rid of it. So this was a more complex patch because it had uh, a lot of curvature on it in different directions so I wasn't sure what was I gonna do there but when I'm not sure how to approach something I just start from somewhere and then it usually works so I don't waste too much time debating how to start I just start and here I started with flat piece and made the curve and now I had to make it uh, look like an arch And even though the flange was deep again, I could uh, use the shrinker and slowly, slowly it took the shape that I wanted. And it fitted pretty well, but the only problem was that it curved a little bit also in the other direction, which you see here, it needs to be flat here. So I used the stretcher on the other side of the flange and uh, that brought it back to flat. See what I mean? It's rocking on the table, so a little bit more here and there, and at the end it was flat. And now I had two of the curves done. And now I could also cut the rest of the metal, because I kept it so far for the curves reference. Now I didn't need it anymore, so I can cut all the rust away and start trimming the patch to fit inside that hole. There was a little bit more rusted metal there, but in the meantime I wanted to keep the corner of that, uh, you see, that complicated shape there. I didn't want to cut this out because it was going to be really hard to make it. I preferred to make the patch complicated than to uh, to make another one for that little corner. And finally, after trimming here and there, I managed to make it fit like a t-shirt. <laughs> And this is where I realized that I wouldn't be able to keep that punch on the wheel well. And also it was pretty rotten, more than what I expected. So I decided to make a new one. And that's what uh, our repair looks like inside. Not bad, huh? Looks good, so I can weld it. Okay, it's all welded in. So here I'm going to weld it from inside and here too. And from here, there's a little hole here, but this, the metal is a little bit thin here. So I think I'm going to replace a piece here once I remove this patch. But everything else looks great. 
I mean, it doesn't look perfect, but I'm going to grind it just a little bit, not too much. On this side, it's not important. The important is the other side. And here, I think it looks more than great. I mean, now I have to grind it, of course, but it is... Uh, it looks perfect for me. All right, I don't know if it is too bright, but I like it. It's not bad. Ground it a little bit. It looks almost like original, but not really because it looks better than the original. <laughs> and I ground the outside as well. Not much, but just a little bit to give it some shape. But I'm not worried that it's going to be seen because the fender comes here, you know. So that's going to be it for today. It is uh, end of the day today, so I'm going to jump on the GT6 now. And this we're going to keep going tomorrow. We're going to weld this, or we might leave them because I'm curious to see what's behind this. So I might just peel this off and see what's behind it. I have an idea, because I can see it from the inside. Oops. Hold on, some light. Okay. I can see what's there or what's not there anymore, but yeah, we're gonna have to make some panel for there as well. And I wanted to show you also the inside, what it looks like. There are some issues here and there. No, actually, this is pretty solid. The problems are only here on the floor and on the sides, of course, over there. But the bonnet, the boot, oh my God, does that boot look nice? Um, probably I've never seen a better looking uh, boot. How is that possible? Can you tell me? Here it is perfect. Inside, look what's happening. Probably there was carpet there that was always wet. Here there was nothing. And at least here I don't need, I don't need to do anything, which is a good thing. Here this looks solid. Here this looks solid. So, I'm happy at least for this. So, the front end is where the problems are. Here, there's some brazing, which means there's some issue behind it, but yeah, we will see. We will see. Whatever shows up, no problem. We can fix anything. I don't know how much material I have, if I have enough for one video or not, but I'm going to record an ending for this video just in case, and if I have enough material to upload, I'm going to upload it tonight. If I don't, I'm not going to upload it. So if you don't see a video tonight, this means that I didn't have enough material, just so you know. <laughs> that was stupid, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, this reminds me of a joke about a guy who owed $5 to somebody else, and he was writing him a letter anyway, so, so that's before the phones and before the emails. So anyways, he was writing him an, a letter and uh, he wrote whatever he needed to write and then at the end he wrote, uh, P.S. The five dollars that I owed you, I meant to put them inside the envelope but uh, when I remembered the envelope was already sealed so I'm gonna give it to you next time when I see it. <laughs> that was a stupid joke, wasn't it? Well, I'm a pretty good uh, joke teller and I know a lot of jokes, but in Bulgarian I can tell them and I can act accordingly. But uh, in English uh, the words just don't come to me, so uh, I'm not going to tell you any more jokes anyway. <laughs> that was a stupid joke. Actually, let me tell you another one. 